and uh, get a lot of enthusiasm. I'm certainly going to look at buying one of the kits uh, to build myself, and uh, I'll let everybody know how it gets on with it, because, uh, yes, it seems like a very interesting project. Next subject, Roy, what have you got yeah, for us? Well, I'm just looking at some news, uh, some numbers from HTC. Uh, so HTC is paying Microsoft for uh, Android, which isn't uh, very good news, but they predict a growth, the a growth of 100 uh, percent when it comes to their phone, the Evo 3D, and all kinds of other phones. <clears throat> I know you use uh, one of these phones, and you actually bought it just days before yeah. to deal with Microsoft Science. So you you probably didn't have to pay the Microsoft tax. That so you still get the uh, you still get the uh, and, and and actually, I saw um, I saw headlines today from Microsoft Crowd. They seem to be pretty happy with Microsoft finding a bit of a cash cow in, in Linux now. Uh, they named five companies so far in which they know pay uh, Microsoft for Android. Uh, the first of which is HTC, which officially like said, well, "Okay, we'll pay for Android." Uh, LG I assume was the one that was alongside. Uh, Samsung was lining up to pay for something to do with Linux, but I don't really know if LG is paying for Android. I just assume so because that contains Linux inside it. But then, did you hear about LG perhaps embracing uh, Amigo? At some stage, they were speaking about that. Yeah, uh, LG, I believe, were the ones that attacked Sony recently, weren't they? And got yeah, the, uh, yes, yes. There is a third one too. Uh, there is Sony. There is, I think, Samsung's yeah. involved in some of these fights too. And Samsung's a huge patent war now, and uh, even in Europe, I think they're like second or third or something like that when it comes to applying to patents in Europe. Even though it's a European company, but it's a really, really major uh, company. Both. Uh, LG and Samsung combined, I think, almost have a million employees. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I must admit, I've never been impressed with either Samsung or LG technology, ever. Um, I've seen uh, the LG televisions, and I've seen the LG uh, Samsung, uh, the Samsung televisions, and I've never been impressed uh, yeah, with, with either the build quality yeah. or the quality yeah. itself. Um, this, this is one of the times when I actually become, dare I say it, a Sony fanboy. My television is Sony, and I would not buy any other television because no other, from what I've had, there's never been the same sharpness of picture, and I've never been impressed with LG. Uh, and so, yes, yeah, so, sorry, I distracted your conversation there. I think they, I always wondered about a sharing of components from within. Uh, either they all have the same factories in places like Taiwan making the components for screens. Or they could be sharing components. So maybe in your Sony TV, there could be some component that's made in LG or something like that. But it, it actually listened to a, an hour and a half of a very interesting video today um, while I was doing some work around here. And, uh, and it mentions, and I know it's a bit off topic, the, the whole situation with regards to production in the East and uh, what we're actually left with in the West. And I couldn't help but think about companies like like Microsoft trying to find a way of, of, of making money out of the Korean and the Taiwanese companies uh, such as uh, you know, in some cases Asus or HTC or uh, whatever you know trying to make money using these thing called patents mm -hmm. um, because there is nothing left to try and, and people say oh we still have the knowledge or you know people uh, you know it goes into a whole load load of discussions, people are too proud to kind of go and work in production like 15 hours a day and they probably won't do it here. So they'll just say, well, let's hire someone really cheaply and use the hybrid of communism, uh, capitalism in China to try and do it cheaply and efficiently. But it's just it's just basically burning the industry here from the inside. Because all the, uh, I'm not sure we had this conversation on the air, maybe we, we had it in person, but uh, can you think of uh, of any computer screen or television or something that's actually made here, or that you've seen recently that's been made here? Uh, almost all of them come from the uh, area of like Korea, uh, Japan, and, and some parts of China. Mm. And some of them are made in uh, some of them I've seen made in Mexico uh, or in Indonesia and stuff in the further down in the south. And the, last, the last model of um, screen that I can actually remember being 
def- uh, I say definitely, I'm sort of 99 percent sure here, made in the UK, was a black and white television that I still own, and funny enough, it still actually does work, um, by a manufacturer called Pi, uh, PYE. Now that television screen was made, and the whole the whole thing was made in the UK uh, from about 70, I think it was about 78, 79, maybe it's a bit later than that. And that television to this day still works. Um, and that's the last thing I can ever remember. Um, st- well, still got my possession that has a British uh, a British make on it, um, and everything else, like Roy says, is made elsewhere. Um, although, please, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I- I'm 99% sure that that's the case with Pi. Um, a very old brand. Sorry, Roy. Yeah, well, going back to like the uh, 1980s, <laughs> 60s or something was a very good time for uh, the Empire and stuff, and especially uh, the worst inventions that the UK missed the boats and like, uh, even before electricity, things like textile and, and then there was chemistry, revelations around chemistry, you know, and then uh, I suppose lots of power and innovation actually shifted to the, uh, to the West. Uh, to the United States and places like that. And Germany was doing pretty well. Uh, and now it seems to be moving all to the west, uh, to, sorry, to the east now. Uh, and increasingly you see all of these companies like Microsoft trying to uh, shift more workforce to there. To Actually, all companies do that. And all the phones, you know, we carry on speaking about the phones, and then we kind of say, well, Apple, Microsoft, Google, you know, American companies, but... Those who are making the most money out of the whole thing, as far as I know, are companies in places like China. Because uh, so, all of them actually make the phones in the same factories, uh, same components, either they make them with aluminum or plastic, or I think Apple uses a kind of a glassy thing, but they usually have the same selection of materials. Mm. And most of the materials there are concentrated, like the, the rare, the, what's called the rare earth, the certain things that you really vital need to get access to like beryllium and stuff you know to make phones and to make all kinds of components uh, that's in places like china now uh, and we export lots of the metal and that that's fine but i'm kind of concerned though because because the manufacturing itself is, is just move, moved abroad and what i foresee is the issue here and that's really ties up the convert the discussion about this is all the west is going to cling on to now is patents and then the treaties like the nafta and uh, now they work on a treaty between uh, India and the EU, which I basically leaked one of the drafts because one person in India was so that it was a travesty and decided we have to try and show people what's going on here. And, and the West is trying to impose those patents on the on the uh, on the East, so the, they'll even take people to court. Uh, Apple took uh, uh, Samsung to court. It, it barely happens the other way around, does it? Like you don't see many companies like. Uh, uh, Samsung or HTC attacking Microsoft and taking them to court. I'm, no, just, I'm thinking <laughs> if there is an exception here, but with uh, yeah, even with patents, I, I can barely. It's usually the companies in the West uh, afraid for their relevance and stuff, trying to pick on the ones in the in the East and trying to remind them to shake them and do a kind of a display of power to kind of say, hey, we've got patents, you know, be careful, we invented this thing, we just use you for cheap labor. And increasingly we'll see this abuse. We have to really do something against that. I mean, I, I don't really know if, if it's kind of good for the economy, but if we're going to be an economy based on patents, you know, it's not going to be beneficial to consumers. All they'll do is just pay more and when they buy a phone that's made in China and the money will go to some rich person somewhere whose, whose money is basically invested in, in other uh- countries. I think um, we touched on it at the very beginning of this, this show, and that was the, um, the. It's such a difficult thing to raise people's awareness about and to campaign about because when people, it's not like a, a, if you were to have a, a campaign or a protest about this type of behaviour by Microsoft or in general. Um, normal protests, you can read banners, you can read signs, and you know instantly, um, and everybody knows instantly what that particular campaign is about. With uh, patents and this type of discussion that we're having now, it's something that you can't just instantly read a, a title, a headline, and understand. You have to look into it and realise what's going on in order to yeah. fully comprehend it. And that's why it's such a difficult campaign um, to raise people's awareness about, because it requires an investment of time to understand what's going on here. It's not a case of banning animal testing or banning... Uh, the uh, petrol vehicles or whatever that's very those are very simple concepts to read and understand straight away. Why are you thinking about price fixing and people's uh, understanding? And this is this is really important because I've been trying to campaign against the 
uh, not just to sell for patents, more specifically those deals. Mm. And uh, cartels create themselves to try and impose uh, restrictions on their rivals. So you kind of let's group together with our patents and scare the way, scare the you know, scare the hell out of the companies competing with us. Mm. Uh, and and today, I, just a few hours, just about an hour before we started the show.